Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tomo Ketch and I'm a quality analyst and today I'm going to be talking about debugging microservices. So about this time last year, I was at a client where we were building a digital platform to expose their business capabilities as a set of self-service APIs. Uh, we had Android and iOS apps um, talking to the platform as well as POS systems at more than 3,000 locations uh, across the country and everything was going really great. However, one morning at about 7 a.m. Central Time, we started getting, many of the microservices started uh, throwing exceptions, indicating that the DB connection pool had been exhausted. You know, very probably common thing. Uh, at the same time, we started getting uh, the number of incoming requests growing exponentially. And then one thing led to another, we started getting a lot of request timeouts. So predictably, after a short while, we were, you know, everything went down. Uh, and we were, all, we were soon involved in a war room call. Now, the funny thing is that about 10 minutes later, when we were actively investigating the incident, the exceptions all stopped, the request timeout stopped, and everything went back to normal. But we hadn't done anything, right? So if you're working with microservices, this is probably a, a very familiar scenario. Microservices, like any other distributed systems, are prone to failure. And in fact, they tend to fail in new and spectacular ways that just require human intervention to decipher. This shouldn't be too surprising because to quote some of the research around complex software systems, um, distributed systems tend to exhibit emergent behavior which cannot be predicted through analysis at any level simpler than that of the system as a whole. So what does this mean for debugging such systems? Frankly, it's really, really hard, right? But I believe there are three things that we can do to make our lives easier. The very first thing is to ask questions, right? It seems simple, but, you know, ask questions. And then seek out answers methodically. So what does this mean? This means you can't just say, oh, uh, you know, users, our site is down, people can't make payments, let's restart the payment service, because now we have a microservice, right? Um, that, that is the wrong thing to do. That's not even debugging, right? That could lead to more side effects instead. What you want to do is ask a series of questions, do some research, and then propose a hypothesis before you even take any action, right? You don't want, you don't want the first thing you do is, uh, to be uh, taking an action. You actually want to propose a hypothesis. And then any actions that you take thereafter should be experiments to validate or invalidate your hypothesis. By the way, this is uh, not something new. It's uh, actually the scientific method. If you've, uh, you know, had a, if you've had to go through like a dissertation, you've probably done this. And this is the very first thing that you want to have in your debugging toolbox. Uh, just remember that there are microservices, there are very many different components interacting with each other. So you need to understand what it is exactly that your actions uh, are going to, uh, you, your actions are trying to drive at, right? So have discipline and have intentionality. Do not be impulsive. Now, going back to our incident, after the 10-minute interval when everything seemed to normalize, uh, we started seeing about one in four payment calls made through the platform failing. Um, in the end, it turns out that it was actually a weird caching issue, right? So there was also a DB connection uh, pool issue, but that wasn't even the root cause. So it, was, it paid off to not be impulsive. Now, once you start to ask yourself questions and seek, you know, and, and, and get a hypothesis and then try to experiment, uh, you will start to, you will inevitably arrive at the concept of observability. Uh, what is observability? Observability is, I'll tell you what it's not, it's not, it's not just monitoring, right? It's about exposing data uh, up, up and getting easy access about what your microservices are doing or not doing. So, uh, typically when you talk about observability, we talk about three pillars, logging, metrics, and tracing. And I'll just talk about this briefly. So, for microservices, logging is generally about aggregating service logs in a central logging system where you can do further analysis. Right? And then metrics are about collecting information about processes or activities, but this is over intervals of time. So things like uh, request rate, um, error rate, duration of response. So uh, the same kind of activities. And one way to sort of disambiguate between the two is that typically when you have more traffic, you're logging, the, the number of events you're logging is going to increase, but then your metrics are going to stay about the same because you're still logging this over intervals of time. And then the third thing is distributed tracing. 
And distributed tracing enables you to reconstruct journeys of transactions across all these microservices that you have, uh, typically by assigning every external request an ID and then propagating that ID to all the services that are involved in handling that request. Now, there are a number of tools that you can use for this, uh, Prometheus, for uh, Metrics, Jaeger, Updash, and th this list just keeps on growing. But the point is not so much about the tools, right? It's, uh, and I got this diagram from uh, Peter Bogan. Uh, he talks about some of the other relationships between the pillars. But the point is that you don't want to wait until you're debugging an incident to say, where can I get this information? These are things you want to think about right from the very start, right? You want to, right from the very start, you have to think about uh, what tools am I going to use to consume this information uh, as well as, you know, get this information and consume it. Um, and you need to be able to answer those questions. Uh, and you, you need to be able to get that uh, sorted out before you start building your services. I like this uh, tweet from the Honest Status page, uh, which says, you know, they basically compare their microservices outage, uh, outages to murder mysteries. And for me, that's kind of how I feel, right? Like every outage is like, oh, okay, what happened here, right? And my take on that is that observability is what ensures that you will have witnesses who are at the crime scene. So you want to start, you want to have them right, you, have, you want to have them there right from the very get-go, right? Now, the third thing is really just about embracing a culture of feedback uh, and learning and continuous improvement, right? So remember how I said that your microservices will fail in new and interesting ways? Well, honestly, they should only, it should only be new the first time, right? So every, every time you have an incident, every time something breaks down, you should actually take that as an opportunity to learn from it. Every failure should give you more information about previously unknown failure modes, and that is something that you should now take back into your, uh, your toolbox and say, okay, how can we make this better? Uh, how can we make the service more resilient, but also how can we make debugging easier and get more information about that? So things, like, things that we can learn from every incident are what are some of the areas where we need more monitoring and alerting, right? Where, the things that we didn't cover. Or what are the places where we need to have additional logging, or even less, right? Because sometimes you have too much noise that makes it hard for you to find the clues that you're looking for. Um, and sometimes it even has to be architectural changes, right? So in our case, one of the things we ended up doing after this incident was to switch from using uh, memory caching, for instance, to using a Redis cache, because that actually solved our problem. Um, we also turned on query logging for RDS instances because we didn't have it at the time and we needed you to be able to see what was happening with our DBs. Um, we also realized that while we're doing a good job of, uh, mostly a good job of monitoring our services, we're not doing a very great job at monitoring the shared infrastructure. So things like RDS, uh, RabbitMQ, Spring Cloud Config Server, these are things that typically fall by the wayside, but they're part of your ecosystem, they're part of your microservices. So you also need to be able to get information about how they're working and whether they have any issues. Now, let me say this. Um, I think there's some really exciting things in this area because as, as we move microservices into production and we start to realize that, oh, we actually have to run these things as well, right? It's not, that doesn't change, right? So I see a lot of uh, exciting research around, you know, like service meshes, uh, being able to see into your microservices and new infrastructure. And I think one of the other things that we're starting to see is that people are also starting to realize that these same tools can be used to provide valuable business insights. So it's not just when things are going down. Um, but I'll leave you with this as my last thought. Regardless of the tooling you choose, or regardless of where you are right now, uh, with uh, debugging or moving to microservices, just remember that they will fail. There will be new ways that you've never thought of, regardless of all the testing. Um, so be prepared for that, right? Uh, when that happens, use a scientific method. Don't be impulsive. Um, and then, obviously, make observability a first-class concern. You don't want to wait until you're, you're having the incident to say, where can I get this data? And lastly, learn and improve from each incident. Thank you.